House Leader, third party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Communities across this province are facing increasing challenges due to an approach to resource development that focuses on harvesting our resources and exporting them raw, instead of adding value and building long-term economic opportunities for the people of BC. This approach goes hand in hand with environmental assessment and decision-making processes that rely on professional reliance. Projects are treated as one-offs in the application process with little or no recognition of cumulative impacts. And this translates to economic impacts. Tourist operators lose business when viewscapes are destroyed. Sports fisheries face losses when salmon habitats are impacted by logging. And local governments shoulder the costs of water turbidity and the need for expensive filtration systems for drinking water. My question through you, Honourable Speaker, is for the Minister of Environment. It is not a company's responsibility to look at cumulative impacts or ecosystem-based management. It is the government's. Will this government make these foundational principles in how they reform the environmental assessment and professional reliance models? Minister of the Environment and Climate Change Strategy. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker, and thank you to the member for the question. Um, I, I know that uh, for the member and members of her community, uh, they know firsthand what happens when government uh, destroys uh, its capacity to monitor environmental impacts, to monitor public health impacts, and to protect the public interest. Uh, they know firsthand what happens when government abdicates its responsibility for oversight. And, Honourable Speaker, I have to say, it didn't take the previous government their full 16 years in office to accomplish that. They did it in a few short years and perfected it over their remaining time in office. We are reviewing the professional reliance model. We, I expect a report this spring, and I expect further public discussion before we enact changes. We've consulted extensively. We're consulting with professional associations who have brought forward uh, excellent ideas, and we are also reviewing uh, in a robust way the entire environmental assessment process. Mm -hmm. House Leader, third party on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Communities do not benefit from short-term economic decision-making. It merely sets them up for a boom and bust cycle. A huge piece of this puzzle is communities' roles in decision making. The current assessment model mutes the voices of communities and elevates the voices of proponents. There is ample evidence of this in the dozens of written submissions to the Professional Reliance Review. From Spalanchine to Haida Gwaii and Fort St. James to Yubo, communities across BC want more say in what happens to the land, air, water, and resources that they depend on for their local economies and their well-being. My question for you, Honourable Speaker, is to the Minister of Environment. I know he is waiting for Mark Haddock's report to make its specific recommendations, but I am looking for a commitment from him today that any action this government takes will focus on lifting up the voices of the communities across this province that currently feel shut out of decision-making processes that affect them the most. Will the Minister make this commitment? Minister of the Environment and Climate Change Strategy. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker, and thank you again to the member for the question. There is a common thread through our review of the professional reliance model, and it's a common thread that extends through our review of the environmental assessment process. We want to hear from communities because in order to have a prosperous economy and good economic development in British Columbia, we need to have public trust. To have public trust, we need to ensure that we consult with Indigenous people around the province and that voices from impacted communities are heard. They're heard throughout the process. That's built into the process. The considerations of communities, the considerations of the environment, the considerations of Indigenous people, both their knowledge, their culture, their rights and title are all built into the province. And if we do that right, Honourable Speaker, we will have a system in British Columbia in which industry can see a clear pathway to success, success that has community support instead of community opposition and a communities that feel shut out of the process. Here, here.